Uh, what does it mean to you to have this opportunity to go to Tokyo? It's truly a blessing to be able to go to Tokyo and compete for Team USA. I would have never pictured myself in this position about like four years ago. So just to have the opportunity to be able to compete at the highest level there is and uh, be able to go out there with my coach and her husband is really awesome. This year as a whole to you know win both the indoor and outdoor national championships, set a school record, now you're going to the Olympics. Like, Has that all kind of sunk in yet, like how much you've accomplished this year? <laughs> Not really. It's kind of funny. We always talk about this at practice. We always talk about, oh yeah, we were out in Oregon for 21 days, and during those 21 days I won a national championship and became an Olympian for life. So it's kind of weird how the second part overshadows like all the other accomplishments that I did this season, but it's truly a great feeling to represent like Ohio State at the highest level and bring home two national championships and become an Olympian this year. How does this kind of compare in your mind between you know competing for an NCAA title and now competing for an Olympic medal? It's, uh, so going into a lot of competitions, we don't really focus on what the outcome's going to be. We just focus on what I want to do and how I want to portray my throw and how I want to accomplish my goals um, technically. So a lot of the times we don't focus on the outcome, like I said, but we really focus on my technical goals and um, just achieving those. And then usually when you achieve those, you come out with the big throws and the PRs and all that stuff, so. When did you, I'm Doug Maurice from Cleveland.com. Uh, when did it first enter your head the idea of being an Olympian was something that was achievable for you? So last year, um, at the beginning of the year in like August, we were going through fall training and all of our like prep work before the season started and I was really getting the hang of the throw and really like jumping levels in my technique. So that's kind of when we started seeing some bigger throws in practice and then they started slowly coming in competition. So during that time is when I really thought about, all right, you can be an Olympian. And then obviously like it was postponed till this year. So that was in my favor almost because I, I wasn't really like physically as good as I am now and my technique wasn't as good as I am now so through the quarantine and all of that stuff I really just like improved myself and all of my technique my strength levels and everything to really jump the next level again to become an Olympian did you did you have that specifically in your head of like hey this year delay is really an opportunity for me where maybe otherwise you would have been thinking about 24. Right? right, yeah. So at the beginning of every year, I write down all of my goals for the weight room, academically, um, to like throw wise, what I want to do. And then I also write down my mental goals. And so in the beginning of the year, I wrote down I wanted to be top five at the Olympic trials because. I already knew I had the standard, but then throughout the course of this year, I kind of started picking up the pieces technically and everything. So I really adjusted my goal and said, I want to make the team. I'm going to do everything in my power, whether it be like not really hanging out with friends, doing extra recovery, all that little stuff that goes into the planning is what really like pushed me to the next level. So when you, so we're all in this pandemic world, everybody's quarantined, but mm -hmm. you're seeing it as an opportunity. Correct, so yeah. So like, what is your life like during that? Are you, are you out thrown by yourself? Are you doing <laughs> stuff in, in your apartment or your house and working? Like, what's that um, like for you? So I went home during quarantine and I stayed with my family. My dad actually welded me a squat rack. So I had a little squat rack set up in my garage and it was just enough for me to like bench and squat, nothing really else, but it was enough for me to make some uh, physical jumps in the weight room. So that was a very uh, good and like beneficial part of the quarantine. But other than that, I wasn't really like focused on throwing. I was just focused on growing my base on what I want to do in the weight room. Did you say mental goals or mental goals? Mental. 
explain that? Uh, did you, was there a barrier that you had to get past in terms of believing yourself, believing that you could do this? And I, I know the coach was probably helping. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of like behind the scenes work that goes on in throwing. A lot of the times, for me, I was a walk on when I came here to Ohio State. So for me to jump levels, I had to accept in myself that. I was good enough to get to the next level. I was good enough to throw 18 meters. Like I would see it all the time at practice, but it was just like me doubting myself in competition and like thinking I wasn't good enough. So I really had to focus on, you've put in all the work, you're, you can make throws out of like crazy positions. You can do anything you want. So I really had to focus on how I perceived myself and what I wanted to do at the next level. Did you, are your coaches or your mental coaches, or did you have an outside mental coach? Or how yeah, you... um, I definitely talked to my coach a lot because she wa she competed at uh, Kentucky and she came second at nationals. So she has a lot of like insight into what goes on in an athlete's mind, like competing at the highest level. So to have her there and to have her husband, who's also a world championship world champion and a silver medalist to have their insight into what needs to happen before these really big meets was very helpful and then just to have my teammates by my side was an awesome feeling to have them there like supporting my every move is this something you have to keep tuning up or have you arrived at the mental thing where you never have those doubts no, you definitely have to keep tuning it up. There's a lot of like different levels to it, especially like going from the big 10 meet to nationals to then the Olympic trials. There's different levels of like, all right, I know I can do it at the big 10 level. I know I can do it at the national level. Now you, I have to prove to myself I can do it uh, throughout the world. You know, it's not just the same level meets that you're going to every time you have to continue to prove to yourself that you're like good enough to compete at these levels. And I assume you know who the world best are if you got them targeted. <laughs> like, how, do, how, do you, how do you deal with that? Are they just, who are they to you? Uh, yeah, so definitely going into the meet, I think distance wise, I was ranked around or 10 going into Tokyo. So I'm definitely keeping the people who are in front of me in the back of my mind. But like I said before, I'm really focused on just executing my throw and all of my technical goals that I have within the throw. To go from being a walk-on to being an Olympian, I mean, what would your advice be to other athletes of how you get from where you were to where you are now? I would just tell other athletes to never really give up and just continue to give all of your effort to every single practice whether it be like just lifting or throwing or whatever sport it is just to continue to give all of the effort that you need to uh, continue to reach levels and there might be like sometimes that it's like uncomfortable but you have to brace the uncomfortable to become comfortable in those situations so a lot of the times in practice we'll go into situations and be in uncomfortable situations where you have two fouls and you have to make a throw right now to make finals. So we'll do a lot of that stuff to become comfortable in those situations. So when you get to it in competition, you know it's there. Have you decided yet whether you're gonna be back for your additional year of eligibility? Yeah, so I'm definitely gonna um, come back for my additional year. Um, I do have a indoor season my sixth year. I'm not 100% sure on what I'm going to do then, but we're just going to see what happens then and go from there. And I'm curious, with name, image, and likeness starting in college sports, has this Olympic opportunity created any opportunities for you in that space? Yeah, I've definitely had a couple brands reach out to me to uh, promote their products and everything, but I'm not really too focused on that right now, you know. Um, just really focused in on practice and all of the next two weeks going into the Olympics. So once I get back, I'll definitely start reaching out to some brands and seeing what I can work with then. So what did, what was the process that led you to being a walk-on at Ohio State? Like, did you know for sure I want to throw in college or mm -hmm. what, how, what other places did you consider going? Yeah, so I definitely knew that I wanted to throw in college. Coming, I graduated from Magnificat, which is in Rocky River. And from that, I, was either between Miami of Ohio or Ohio State. And 
I was heavily considering Miami, but I saw a better potential to compete against like the Big Ten and the better competition at the time here. So I saw more room for growth and development into a better thrower. So I ultimately chose Ohio State to come here. What kind of leap is it from walk on to <laughs> Olympia? Because that seems like you came <laughs> a long way. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's it's definitely un unimaginable. Like the the amount of success I've had in the past two years is just really unbelievable. And like I can't do it all. I can't do it without my coach. You know, she's the one who is always there by my side. Like. If I walk into practice a little funny, she'll know like something's up immediately. She's like the leader of the train, you know, conductor and everything. So couldn't do it without her. Back to COVID real quick. I see you're at home. Diet is such an important part mm -hmm. of this. How did you handle that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right? my mom and dad were making like two or three trips to Costco a week because I have two younger brothers who are, uh, one goes to BW and plays lacrosse there. And then the other one's also a C or was a junior in high school, and he plays lacrosse. So we're both we're all pretty big people. So <laughs> to go, we were just consuming food nonstop. It was it was awesome, but um, we were just heading to Costco every like couple days to get all the meat stocked up, chicken, everything like that. How many sweets are you allowed to have? <laughs> I don't really like sweets that much. My my guilty pleasure is ice cream. I love ice cream, especially uh, Wits up the street on high. It's very good. It's not ice cream, it's custard, but you know, it's still really good. <laughs> How's it feel to be part of a record number of uh, Buckeyes going to the Olympics? It's really awesome to have this many Ohio State um, athletes coming to the Olympics. It's also sort of comforting just to know like, you're not the only one representing Ohio State and Columbus at the Olympics. It's really awesome to have like everybody else there because you know you have a certain level of comfort to have other athletes there to compete with you and have that some connection. Does that make it more special when, when you see uh, fellow <laughs> Olympians around campus? And oh yeah, it, de it definitely makes it more special just to see everybody repping their uh, respective country and to have them there is really great. How did you start throwing? When I was in elementary school, we had this uh, like stipulation on the track. If you did every single event in the year, you would get a sweatshirt. And so it was my weekend to do throwing. And I guess for an elementary kid, I was pretty good at it. So they had me stick with it, but then once I got to high school, I really started to like the sport and just enjoy like the process behind throwing and all the little details that go into it. Did you get the sweatshirt? No, I didn't. You didn't get the sweatshirt? <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't run like the mile or something and I missed out on it. Yeah, it was we'll, a little disappointing. Uh, we'll go back and get that sweatshirt. <laughs> She's a lady, yeah. get her sweatshirt. <laughs> didn't you also do some power lifting or? big into that? Yeah, I, that's also one of the things that I really love about track is the way our strength program is, um, works is we do a lot of like Olympic cleans and um, snatches. So that's one of the things that I really worked on in high school was getting those movements to pretty good form. So we worked on the positioning and everything and throughout high school, I really, just kept making them better and um, continuing to grow in that aspect of it. So I really like that behind the scenes part of uh, throwing and everything. I'm Chris Booker with Ohio State. Did you did you watch the Olympics growing up? <laughs> I feel bad saying no, but I never really did. I think I would watch like the basketball games when they come on, but I never really watched track. Going, growing up, I never really was like super, super into it until, like I said, like my sophomore year of high school. I was when I really started getting into the sport and growing to love it. What are some of the things you're looking forward to in Tokyo? I think one of the things I was looking forward to was meeting LeBron, but obviously he's not going this year. So I guess um, hopefully seeing Kevin Love, you know, fellow Clevelander, and then. Um, just competing and enjoying the atmosphere and 
really growing from the opportunity and learning what it takes to be a high level athlete and compete at the Olympics. What, what did it feel like when you qualified? When you knew you were an Olympian? <laughs> I was so overwhelmed when I qualified. I started crying right as I was walking into the ring. I could not focus on my throw to save my life. I kind of just threw one out there and then I was able to go celebrate with my coach and her husband and then my family was also there so I got to see them really quick and then do our victory the do the victory lap which was awesome to see all the people coming out supporting and just high-fiving all of them. When you're working and lifting and training mm -hmm. You know, you just want to be the best you can be. You want to be a Big Ten champ. You want to be an NCAA champ. Were the Olympics in your head specifically? Like, is that something that you use as motivation or not really? I always, I like, starting my junior year, like I said previously, I always thought I could be an Olympic caliber athlete, but I never thought that it would come like this quickly. I always thought about, all right, Paris is going to be the year that you make it, but to be able to achieve it right now and be on the team is amazing, and it just sets my plan further in motion on what I want to achieve next in my career.